Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to begin our study with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so grateful for the things that you have been showing us, for the light that is becoming that has been coming from your word. And um, we just ask again for your presence here as we study together. We know that you are unfolding to us light that comes from the past, from the midnight cry. And Lord, we need to understand your word. We need your strength and power, your presence, your mind, so that we can um, uh, become a part of your kingdom. I pray for each person that you can work in their lives in a powerful way, that you can speak to them individually, and that we can all obey your voice. Be with us now as we open your word together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I got a bit carried away doing some math. So we're starting a bit late. Now, um, Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, we had finished this up. And uh, I just wanted to show some things that we had discovered this morning. Now... <clears throat> I'm going to go to my diagrams here. So this was just finishing off this diagram of what we had discussed yesterday regarding. Um, so one is I, I put this in this chart, this one year from December 25th, 2021 to December 25th, 2022. Uh, Noted here this battle with the Ephraimites in these verses, 12, 4, 12, 5, and 12, 6, and the symbolism that was there in December 24th, December 25th, and December 26th, that one-year period, the three days at the beginning and the end. Um, and then I put Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon there, the seven years of Ibzan, the 10 years of Elon, and the eight years of Abdon. And we had done a calculation where I wanted to know the average number of years that those three uh, were judges. And uh, by adding them together, we get 25, and then we divide it by three, and we get eight and a third, which is the number of Palmoni, Daniel 8, 1 through 8, 13. Um, it also can be 8.333, uh, pretend. Eight and a third years times 365.25, so that's the length of a Gregorian year, gives you the length of a Gregorian month. So I thought that was rather interesting. Um, well, it gives you 100 times, so it's 100 months. And so if we, if we divided that number by 12, or not that number, we divided 365 and a quarter by 12, we get the number of the length of the Gregorian month. So we can see that that's 100 months. So what I did here is I put April 5th, 2030, and it counted backwards. Now, that doesn't bring us to December 25th, 2021. It brings us to December 5th, 20 days before. Um, and that's 100 months. Now, um, I was noticing that, you know, the December 5th date reminded me of something, of 2021. And, and this was actually an old chart of mine where I had had July 27th, 1840. And I had had this calculation here going to December 5th. Um, 1840 times 360 divided by 10. So I'm taking one tenth of that number. And that's 66,240 days. And that brought me to December 5th, 2021. That was a, a chart that I had done in 2018. Um, also had 391 and a half days from November 9th, 2020. So the chart was based on Samuel Snow's letters. But this is kind of an interesting fact in that what one of the things that we are addressing and that we will address based upon the symbols that we got from um, uh, Tola and Zaire, which is sort of the parallel judges to these um and and even in these ones themselves we get these symbols that relate to islam and so 
if we go back and we take this Islam symbol, it brings us to December 5th, 2021. I haven't really looked at what else. I don't know what happened on December 25th, 2021. Um, you know, it's, it's a, a Sunday. I don't, I don't, I didn't look at anything about that, but um, we can see that this April 5th, 2030 date still continues to yield uh, a message related to Islam. So whatever that is. Okay, so that was just our work this morning with me and Iran looking at these things. So was there any final questions regarding this? Well, there wasn't yesterday regarding Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. And then we were going to move into Samson. So if, if there's no final comments on this, then we can do that. Okay. <clears throat> so we're going to... Um, put Samson on the line again, as I mentioned yesterday, we're not going to go through this as in much detail because it's much more recent that we have done on Samson. And so just to kind of review though, we remember that Samson is a, an ironic line. Now, why did we say that? What was our reason? But Samson is, is negative when you look at the story in some ways, though it is describing a reform line. It is a judge. But what was our reasons for saying it was an ironic line? Nobody remembers in what, what our reasoning was, how we came to understand that. Okay, so Iran says the negative aspects of the story relates to positive prophetic events. Okay, so... We, when we look at Samson, we don't see somebody that's representing Christ. Now, and yet when we look at this reform line, it is a reform line that re relates to um, positive prophetic events. That is, events that relate to our line, that relate to um, a reform actually be, being done. So the, the positive aspects are illustrated by a negative story. Now, do we have precedent in this, in, in doing this with a line like this? So, okay, so we have the story of Esther, right? And, and that's how we had to relate it. So Iran put that comment there. Now, we have a symbol of rebellion. So that's Judges 13. 13 is a symbol of rebellion, right? And um, we know when we go to Genesis um, chapter 13. Now, where is it? Where, where do we get first get the 13? It's not Genesis 13. Um, is it Exodus 13? No. Numbers 13? There's some 13, some chapter 13. Ah, here it is, Numbers 13. So the number 13 first gets its symbol as being rebellion in Numbers 13. So this is going to be the rebellion that happens with the spies, right? That's going to end up having them 40 years in the wilderness. Okay. So when we look at Judges 13, of course, um, 
we can just say that this symbol of rebellion, this number 13, is going to be used in a positive sense. Now, what were the keys for us to understand where we start the story of Samson? Are we going to start it, if we're going to put it on a line, are we going to put it at 9-11? Are we going to put it at some other place? Okay, so we, we're going to have this Nazarite vow, right? So we know that this is, here, let's, let's just read through some of this. And really, I was hoping people would remember more of this. Uh, the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. And there was a certain man of Zorah of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thou art barren and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now, therefore, beware, I pray thee, and drink not wine nor strong drink and eat not any unclean thing. For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the children, for the child shall be... Um, a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. So are we going to take this as 9-11? Uh, and there's rebellion 13 years, Genesis 14, verse 4. Um, Stephen put it there. Okay. So are we going to start this at 9-11? We're going to look at Genesis 13. Genesis 14, verse 4. 12 years they served Kedileomer, and in the 13th year they rebelled. Yes, that's the one where we get this rebellion. Now notice this is connected to uh, Genesis 14-4. Um, so what is that doing if you're taking a symbol of the 144,000 and you're tying it to this 13th year. What, what symbols are being brought together here? Well, the 144,000. Yeah. But why are they? 100. Yeah. yeah. Okay, go on. So, um, in a sense, they would be rebelling against the papal authority, the Sunday law. Okay. So, this is the conflict. This is the great controversy between the 144,000 and the world in rebellion. Now, now, we also know, as Angela, I think it was Angela, noted that 13 days is um, related to the symbol of July 18, 2020, because 13 days is um, is 18720 minutes, right? Um, so here we have this, this, the symbol of rebellion, this 13, we also have numbers 13. We have the symbol of the 144,000 and, and we can see how the, then judges chapter 13 is illustrating the 144,000, but in the context of rebellion, because Samson is really going to be representing um, this movement. 
in a in a positive sense, even though he well in the negative he's negative in a sense, but it it shows this in positive prophetic events, which was Iran's words, which is a good way of describing it. And but uh, the other question I asked related to this angel of the Lord appearing. Um, you know, is this a mighty angel of Revelation 18 coming down at 9-11? Is the birth of Samson here representing uh, something connected with 9-11? Can we, could we say that? I mean, we've had judges, we're, we're starting with this premise that judges from Judges chapter 2, verse 1, which represents 2001, um, and to Judges 2, verse 23, which represents 2023, that, that the book of Judges is symbolizing the history of this movement from 2001 to 2023. It also is connecting to 2030. Um, but it's mostly describing the history from 9-11 to 2023. It doesn't tell us much about uh, this movement to 2030. Just and whatever that means is a symbol at, 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 the, at the least. So we could say that this line is going to start at 9-11. Now, what about this Nazarite vow? What did we learn about that? How does how is this to be understood as a symbol in relationship to this movement? Well, with the grape, you have the symbol of doctrine. Okay. So maybe that you, well, I suppose there's, there would be no doctrine at all in the sense that symbol. I was thinking maybe no, no false doctrine, but mm -hmm. there would be, we, we, we should have like a correct doctrine. Okay. So, so we can say these symbols relate, relate to doctrine. I mean, it's, it's we looked at the Nazarite vow and what was the Nazarite vow really about? Yeah, so it is a consecration. So it's it's a type of consecration. And what's the particular purpose of the Nazarite vow? Like why is there a Nazarite vow in the first place? So that's number six. So in this, the vow of his separation, right, is what they call it. Right, remember that he, it says, if any man die very suddenly by him and he hath defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. This is verse nine. On the seventh day shall he shave it. And on the eighth day, he shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons to the priest, to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and make atonement for him that he sinned by the dead and shall hallow his head uh, the same, that same day. He shall consecrate unto the Lord the days of his separation and shall bring a lamb of the first year for a trespass offering. But the days that were before shall be lost because his separation was defiled. So, um, I mean, they're making this, this vow um, of separation. 
And what's the specific number of days? It's, it's, it's chosen in the sense of his vow, correct? It's my understanding. So there's a number of days that are that that they're going to make a vow that they're going to do this, right? But there's not a specific number of days that needs to be chosen. But if it's interrupted by the the defilement of a dead body, he has to consecrate himself again. And those days will not be counted in the part of his vow. And we have the seventh day mentioned in this uh, consecration if he um, ends up uh, having to contact um, the dead. He can't make himself unclean for his father or for his mother or for his brother or for his sister when they die because the consecration of God is upon his head. So that means um, he can't come near any dead body, even if it's his mother, his father, his brother, his sister, if they die. If somebody dies next to him, he has to have this seventh day of... Um, that he's going to be basically unclean for seven days. And then he shaves it. And on the eighth day, he shall bring this offering, two turtles and a young pigeon, or two turtles or two young pigeons, two turtle doves, uh, to the priest of the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, right? And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering, the other for a burnt offering, and make atonement for him for that he sinned by the dead and shall hallow his head that same day. Okay, could we take this, um, what, what would the, be the symbol of a man dying very suddenly by us? If, if, we're, if this is this movement, has this happened? And has this movement had to um, go through this, this seven or eight days of consecration? And is that an application for the additional uh, extension of time. Can we in any way um, understand this as far as a line? Okay, so Angela is relating this to the cleansing of the temple. That occurs in Second Chronicles 29. It's going to be eight days, right? So this is, there's the seventh day that uh, he, he has to shave himself seven days later, shave his head again. And then on the eighth day, he does this offering. So maybe we can take that eight and apply it to Second Chronicles 29. So we have this symbol of this movement as being a Nazarite vow. So that's that's what we understand here. And we're going to take that from 9-11. That's the, the movement, at least in, in that history, where that message of this Nazarite vow occurs. Now, obviously... Samson's not born at 9-11. This is going to be a mighty angel coming down at 9-11 and instructing his mother.
And then we, we dealt with some of the symbols here about the woman in the field, right? So she's, she's going to, um, she's going to tell her husband. So let's, let's go through here. Um, God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. So Manoah entreated the Lord and said, Oh my Lord, let the man of God, which thou didst send come again to us, unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and son had said unto him, behold, the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child and how shall we do, um, how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I command her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, what is thy name? When thy, that when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is secret? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously. And Manoah and his wife looked on and it came to pass when the flame went up toward heaven from off the altar, that the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us these things, nor would, uh, nor would as at this time have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew and the Lord blessed him. And the spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtael. So if we're going to take this story of Manoah and his wife, the parents of Samson, and we're going to place it on a line, how would we place this on a line? Is this a line in and of, of itself that we can place connected to 9-11? Like, is it? Is it just 9-11? Is it going to be all 9-11? Or is it going to be, uh, is this line going to have um, its own structure? So you guys are going to have to help me here a bit. Maybe a lot. Okay, you guys, what 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 should we do here? Um, so we're going to have to draw a line in some way.
Okay, so Angela's trying to deal with the, the head, the symbol of the head. Reminds her of Psalm 40, verse 7, and 144.10. Okay. One forty verse seven. Strengthen yeah. my head and the Lord strengthen my head in the day of battle. Okay. But when I look at uh Judges thirteen, uh seventeen and eighteen, what when it says, What is thy name? etc. And the angel of the Lord said, Why seekest thou thus after my name, seeing it as secret? That reminds me of Daniel eight thirteen in Paul mm. Moni, the yeah. revealer of secrets. Yeah, so this, this is another Palmoni verse. And of course, it has the same numbers as 813. It's just the one is doubled there, and it's not in the same order. But um, yeah, so we, we had decided that this is Christ. This angel of the Lord is Christ, right? So it's not just an angel of some sort. It's the angel of the Lord, which represents Christ. And so Christ is the one that comes down, and that's why we would place this at 9-11. Right, so in trying to draw a line of this, you know, I don't I just have this beginning of a line. So we've got September 11, 2001, and, you know, I don't, I don't know what else we're going to have here. Yet, I was going to draw this out. Okay, so so we're going to have some kind of line here. So we got September eleventh, two thousand and one, and we're going to mark this as. As what? Are we going to take this here? Um, okay, so this is going to be Judges 13. Um, if we're going to give it a verse, um, oops. So verse 13.3, I guess, is where we would put that, at least. You might say that there's more verses that are involved here. But whether we're just going to put this at 9.11 or whether we're going to do something else with it. So Christ comes down, that's at 9-11. So you're still going to have to help me here. We're going to have this message given to Samson's mom, but then we're going to have... So we have a wife that's barren. So what would that represent? Now, what we could do, yeah, so the asking of the name, we'll, we'll address that a bit more later. Um, but I want to deal with the beginning of this line. So I'm just going to move this over here. And so if we have barrenness, and remember, we also have this... Um, in the story of Samson, we have the Philistines. So they've been delivered into the hands of the Philistines 40 years. And what did the Philistines represent as far as an enemy?
And we also have a barren woman. So, you know, if we have a reform line, we need a period of darkness. And we need to describe what that that darkness is. So, um, if they're delivered into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years, what is that 40 years? What is it representing? Okay, it's Philistine oppression. And what is Philistine oppression represented in our time? Are we going to put that in 11? But Stephen? Well, 40 years is a representative of a wilderness. Okay, it represents a wilderness. Yeah. So it normally represents a period of darkness. Right? So if in yeah. this line, we're going to talk about this Philistine line, um, and we're going to relate it to this movement, the question, the question is, are we, how are we going to take this symbol? Because when we originally discussed this, we tried to discuss how this relates to the church, or does this relate to this movement? Um, right, that was, that was part of the... Um, the discussion we know that 40 years represents 40 years in the wilderness it can represent the period of darkness that precedes a reform line um and the philistines what do they represent as far as whichever line we're, we're deciding that we're on that the birth of samson is like i'm saying that we have 9 11 here now, 9-11 is not the time of the end on our line, but in when it relates to this movement, can this Philistine oppression be represented um, by something that causes the barrenness of this woman? So are these related, for instance? Not, not literally in this story, but as far as a symbol is concerned. Can, can yeah, I, I'm think. Yep. Go on. Yeah, my thoughts are these here forty years. Uh, this is taking us back to early in that our time period. So this is all taking place within, in a sense, the wilderness. Okay. Explain yourself a bit more. I didn't quite understand. It. So, so I'm saying the forty years hasn't transpired. 40 years has just begun. And then okay. the situation with the angel comes down. Okay, so um, so they're delivered into the hands of the Philistine in 40 years. At this so this isn't they haven't been in the Philistines' hand for 40 years. They're being delivered at the beginning of this. And that that we decided before, right? Okay, yes. so, so they're in a period in the wilderness, and this woman is barren. Is is she barren? What's what's the connection between the forty years and the barrenness? So yeah, we're not going to have a period of forty years preceding this, because the forty years is going to end at the end of the Philistine oppression, and Samson's going to be. Um, a judge during this period of oppression. Okay. So are we as a movement, is, is our movement raised up during a period of oppression in which a woman is barren? And then that. SDA. Okay, Jeff. The corporate SDA would be barren. Wouldn't it be barren? Okay. So can can we say that this movement comes from Adventism? 
Yeah. Say that. Can, can we say that 9-11 is a message to, to Adventism? Yep. Okay. So, so it's during this time of this. So I guess what we would have to do here in this diagram, I know I should be switching back and forth between things, but uh, uh, so if we're going to put this here, this is going to be, we'll say this is 40 years. And this 40 years of oppression, could we start it at 1989? Can we do this? Can we go? And so this, they've been delivered into the hand of the Philistines. And so I'm just going to be putting these verses rather than writing all this. Okay, so Samson means little son. Um, okay, so, I mean, it means sunlight. Shimshon. Or like the sun. It comes from the word Shemesh, right? So like Beth Shemesh. Shemesh means the sun. And, and it comes from a root meaning brilliant. Okay, so, so little sun, sunlight like the sun. So those are the meanings of, of the name Samson. But does this make sense to people what I'm drawing? Uh, taking November 9th, 1989, and taking this 40 years beginning there. So wherever this ends, whether it's literal 40 years or whatever, it's not. Now, can 40 years also represent the fourth generation? I mean, often it represents a generation. But this can this be a, a period in the fourth generation? I mean, the fourth generation of God starts making things right. Yeah, so if, if I understand you correctly, so here we have the fourth generation. So we know 1989 is not the beginning of the fourth generation because that's 1957. But we have a reform line that comes in the fourth generation. That is, uh, I mean, we have this period of darkness before 1989. But in this context, this is talking about some kind of oppression of the Philistines that relates to, uh, to the church, um, but it's something that this movement has to address. That is, uh, what's raised up is going to be Samson. 
and we're going to see it September 11th, a message comes to the Adventist church that's in this period of Philistine oppression because they failed to recognize the prophetic significance of November 9th, 1989, when it occurred. And it's September 11th, 2001. They're going to be passed by. And, and this is, in this line, it's a promise of Samson, right? It's the promise of this deliverer that's going to deliver from the Philistines. Is that making sense to people? Or am I just speaking? Okay, I, I need some help here. So we got, um, we have this promise. Now, if we go to the story, so let's look at the scriptures here. We're going to have this whole interaction with um, the mother of Samson and Manoah. So who is Manoah? in this story as we relate it to our history. So the woman is given this message, but she's going to consult the husband. But she's going to tell him of this story of what, of what happened to her. She's going to tell her husband. So in three verse 13, verse three, 9-11 occurs, and she's going to be given this message from, from Christ, from Palmoni. She doesn't know yet um, exactly what it means, right? So she hears this message, and in verse 6, she can't, comes and tells her husband, saying, a man of God came unto me. And she describes his countenance was that of an angel of God. Very terrible. But he didn't say his name. Then she describes what, what uh, God's directions. So she has to drink no wine or strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb to the day of his death. And Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the, uh, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. So who is Manoah? If this is 9-11 and the woman represents the church, and Samson represents the message that, that this movement brings to the church. Who is Manoah? Okay, so Angela says that Judges 13.3 could represent Je Jeff's message. Um, but I, I would say no. I'm I'm going to say that this this message is 9/11 because of the symbols of the mighty angel coming down. But it, it definitely represents uh, Jeff's message at this time, at 9/11. Now the question is, who is Manoah? He's the parents of Samson. So we have the woman representing the church. That's barren, and a message comes to her from God, a message of the Sunday law, because 9-11 is really about a message of the Sunday law. And then we have Manoah, 
which means rest, right? Related to the word Noah. Okay, so Iran says with a question mark, SDA church leadership. Okay. Um, well, I would say that this represents a message. So it's a message of rest. What would the message of rest be? Okay, peace. Uh, does rest relate to the Sunday law or the seven times or the Sabbath, right? So the Sabbath Sunday law controversy. Does it relate to the gospel in some way? Because we know that um, the everlasting gospel, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. So we can relate that 11, uh, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. We can relate uh, to this message as well. So if, if we're going to go back, back to the drawing, so I feel like I'm pulling teeth here, but um, so we're going to we're going to have a message. So this message, I'm just copying these here to put in a new line. Well, I wouldn't say it's the message to the Laodiceans. I mean, in a sense, this message is because that's the, the comment there. But. Um, we would have to say that this is related some way to um, the 2520. So uh, I'm just going to put here the 2520, which I always mark as 2004, even though technically in some ways it's 2005, we get the first presentations. But that message comes to this movement. Um, so however we want to count this, I always like it as 2004. But it's, it's going to be a message of, of rest, the 2520. Now, because we know that, that this is related. If we're going to take Manoah, which is related to Noah, and we know that Noah is the son of Lamech, Right, and we know that whole structure there, de dealing with the seven 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 structure, and the one eighty seven, the two fifty two, the sixty five, all of those tied together in that structure. That that's really the structure of the twenty five twenty relates to the twenty five twenty. Now, as far as the verses here, then we would just say when Manoah uh, is brought into this story. Right. So I think that's going to be that his name is first mentioned in verse eight. If I remember, unless it's mentioned earlier. Yeah, it's mentioned in verse two. But in this context here, we're going to have Manoah in verse eight. So we could say when she told her husband, 13, six. Maybe we could say that there. Um, but it's when Manoah entreated the Lord and said, Oh my Lord, let the God which thou didst send come again unto us and teach us what we shall do. I think I would put that verse as the verse here. So what do we see with this verse? What what comes into this movement more specifically in 2004 with con connected with the 2520? Can we see 813 there? Can we see Palmoni coming into this movement in 2004? 
And, and why would we even mark 2004? We know that it's the 2520. We have the charts, the 1843 charts. They've been studying these. We have um, uh, the messages of Hiram Edson. Dwayne Dewey's going to share these with Jeff. I believe that Dwayne Dewey already has accepted the 2520 in 2004. The time we get um, the meetings in um, Ozone. Okay, so they, yeah, they have the Ozone Camp meeting. That's going to be November 7th, uh, 2004, right? So we're going to have ozone there. I think uh, that, that's when uh, Dwayne Dewey meets Jeff, I think, for the first time. Or he maybe, meets, no, hold on. No, they no, know but, knew each other for a long time. Yeah, that's right, yes. They knew each other for a long time. Now, they've been friends okay. all through this, this history because um, Jeff knew Dwayne way back in uh, early on, in the at least in the 90s, early 90s, when he lived in California. Oh, okay. Right. But yeah, okay. this is, this is going to be, I mean, we have the Ozone Camp meeting, but we also have Dwayne Dewey introducing to Jeff, I don't know exactly what date, but he's going to introduce Hiram Edson's articles at some point here. And, and then they're going to start discussing this 2520. And it's going to be in whatever it is, in January or February in 2005, that Jeff is going to do the first pro public presentation because whatever he's presenting, he's, he runs out of material and sort of on a whim uh, starts to draw this on a line, uh, Hiram Edson's um, 2520, the one for Northern Israel, and, uh, and Miller's 2520, and starts to recognize this prophetic mirror. That, that's my understanding of what happens when he first publicly presents it. But he already knows about the 2520, and we have the ozone camp meeting. And we also have the symbol here of Palmoni from this verse. And I would say that... Um, you know, it's not 813, it's 138, but it's still, still the same symbol. And, um, and this is Manoah entreating the Lord. And is that, does that represent well what happens in 2004? I mean, we could, we could say, you know, this movement is entreating the Lord all the time, but do we get a light from 2004 that comes from the 2520 that really expands Jeff's message? Because prior to that time, he's, he's been focused mostly upon 1989 and the Sunday law. 9-11 has occurred and they have sorted this out, you know, by 2003, roughly. Uh, they're going to have some of the first presentations really in detail in 2004, and that's going to be uh, the last guy with the last name, Williams. Um, is it Russell Williams or something like that? I'm, I'm bad with names. Anyway, um, so we have this ozone camp meeting. And now we're going to see that that this, we're going to have a specific message, right? This message is going to be Samson. But before we get to the message of Samson, we're having these steps that lead up to it, right? So Judges 13 is going to lead to the birth of Samson, to this sunlight, this little sun, something that's like the sun, that's going to, um, really be an ironic reform line. So, so are we on the right track here in what we're doing? Does this make sense to people, how we're looking at these, these verses? And again, we've gone through them. Um, don't think, say, think we're saying anything new here. We're just trying to place them on the line. <laughs> Yeah, I just have 
no recollection recollection of yeah. 25 20 of the 25 20 coming in before 2005 okay well i do so i know that jeff had not presented it until 2005 but he was aware of it is what i'm saying right so he had the charts he knew it was on the charts and Dwayne dewey had pointed this out to him but it hadn't really struck him yet he hadn't done anything with it that's my understanding of when we went through understanding the lines I mean, yeah, we're going to find that in 2005, he does the presentation. Um, but it is connected with what happens in 2004. So that's why I put it in 2004. I mean, we could put it in 2005 if you wanted to. I mean, the date there is not necessarily that significant as far as any of this line here. Um, but that's where I've always marked that that message arriving. It's not going to be empowered if you're going to look at the 2520 as Jeff presents it. It's it's going to be presented in 2005, but it's it's already present in Jeff's mind in 2004 because when he presents this, he's he's been studying because the main reason that he was drawn attention to the higher medicine articles. And the one thing we can say is that the higher medicine articles are published prior to 2005. So in, um, uh, when we look at, uh, let me see if I can do a quick search of this. It's usually pretty slow. Um, uh, so, so I'm just gonna search uh, the letters as quickly as I can. So this is going to be, uh, what's the best search for that? So in, um, it's going to take a little bit to search these letters. <clears throat> so while that's searching, we can discuss this a little bit more. Now, so the woman, um, so Manoah entreats the Lord. And he wants to know what they are to do as far as teaching the child. Right. They need to be taught about what they're supposed to do with this child. What shall we do unto the child that shall be born? And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah and the angel of the God came again. Angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But, but Manoah, her husband, was not with her. So we're saying that these are messages. Right now, the woman is going to hear this message. Um, and run, and she's going to tell her husband that the angel came that appeared unto me the other day. Um, and Manoah arose and went after him, after his wife, and came unto the man and said unto him, Art thou that man, the man that speakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. So if we're going to look at this message relating to... Um, uh, and, and I got the search done here. So I believe it's going to be where the articles are published. That's what I want to find. Yeah, so it's actually going to be published in the November newsletter in 20, uh, or 22. So in 2002 and and that's the first time we're going to get the 2520 mentioned because the title of the article is the times of the gentiles and the deliverance and restoration of the remnant of israel from the seven times 
or 25, 20 years of Assyrian or pagan and papal captivity considered. Right, so it's going to be published in November of 2002, and and they're going to publish it. I don't think all at once, if I remember. Um, but this is going to be discussed, right? So they're they're not really looking at the 2520 per se yet, but it's still on Jeff's mind. So that's going to be 2002. Now, and if you if you search um, Jeff's letters for the 2520, um, it's obviously mentioned in November of 2002, um, and it's going to be the next time it's mentioned in the newsletters is not until May. 2006 that we get the number 2520 which doesn't make much sense to me uh, maybe these are not in order they are so even the message of the 2520 doesn't really become predominant in this message uh, it happens quite gradually right so it's um, you're going to see it more in 2007 that they're actually uh, really starting to discuss the 2520. So it takes a while even for this movement. So you don't get till 2007 that you actually see anybody really discussing the 2520. So even though Jeff had presented it in 2005, it's still going to take time till this becomes a predominant message in this movement. Okay, so it's not it's not going to just happen right away. But I mark 2004 for the simple simple reason it has to do with uh, I know that that I'm, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that that's when it's pointed out to Jeff and he really starts to think about it. But it takes some time, right? Even though he presents it in 2005. It doesn't become a, a huge part of the message right away. It's going to take time. And that's understandable because Jeff's going to really have to start to study it more. And other people are going to have to become interested in it. And there's other things happening as well. So if we have Manoa... Um, here well the woman making haste what would the woman making haste be so the angel of the lord comes down to the woman and she makes haste what do we have this as a symbol The final movements will be rapid ones. Okay, well, the fi final movements will be rapid ones. But do we have haste as a symbol anywhere in our lines? Have we used this, this haste? I mean, if you look up, I don't know if we want to look up this Hebrew word haste. Um, I can do that. So the one I think of is Esther 5.5. 5. The king said, cause Haman to make haste that he may do as Esther hath said. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. So how do we take this haste in this story of Esther? Do you remember? It's also going to be used in Esther 6.10, where the king said unto Haman, Make haste and take the apparel and the horse, as thou hast said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew. 
So we have, in connection with this story here, uh, we have Haman having to make haste. Um, right? So the king said, cause Haman to make haste. Right? For this banquet. And also, the same thing happens. Haman, make haste and take the apparel and the horse. Right? So this is going to be leading Mordecai around, honoring him, right? Now, the first time we have this word um, is Genesis 18, verse 7. So that's the first time this word shows up in the Bible. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. So why do we have um, 187 attached to this word haste? How can we how can we address this in the story of Judges? Well, July eighteenth was kind of in haste. Okay, but but yeah, we have it now here in the story of Judges, right? We have this, um, the woman making haste, running to show her husband. Is this about a message that needs to be given in regard to? the Sunday law or prediction or July 18th? Is this an, a type of urgency of a message? And can we relate that to July 18th, the July 18th prediction? I mean, we're just taking the word haste here and we're just seeing that it's in the story of Judges and in connected with Samson and that the first time it's mentioned is Genesis 18, verse 7. So is that significant? Are we going to just ignore that? Or are we going to say that it's it's important? It wasn't just a coincidence. The Genesis 18 verse 7 it has the first mention of this word haste. And according to Strong's, this word occurs fixed 65 times in the King James. So if we're going to put this message, if we're going to take this, um, the woman making haste, can we put it on a line? Can we put it here? Okay, so you just gave us a link to Higher Medicine's articles there, Angela. Thanks. So if I'm going to take this haste and we're going to put it somewhere on a line. So are we can we give it a date? Okay, it's a repetition of the angel's message. So if I'm going to, and now, <clears throat> how, how would we place this as far as a date is concerned? Do we have anything that we can mark, that we can...
Should we take it and put it as a way mark? Is there some way mark after 2004 that we can mark with this haste? This it says the repetition of a message, right? So we have. Um, well, I'm I'm thinking of September seventh, two thousand nineteen, but it seems quite far away from two thousand four. Okay. Yeah, so you're going to move all the way to September seventh. Uh, well, I just said I'm I'm just saying that came to mind, and I'm saying. Yeah. Well, that's definitely a way mark, uh, but the question is, like the symbol that we have here is, it's a delivery of a message in haste. Um, and and if we're looking at this history, this period, um, it definitely wouldn't be um, September seventh, two thousand nineteen. There's things that symbols that are going to be here beforehand. So we're, we're putting it there. We're not going to mark a year yet. And we haven't got very far. It's almost nine o'clock. This has been one of the slowest studies. Of course, we started late too. So, um, so if we, so Manoa arose and went after the wife. So what about Manoa arising? If this is a message of rest, um, wouldn't this be where this message of Manoah of the 2520 arises? So if, if I was going to do this, so I'm going to go back to this diagram. Um, so if I'm going to do this, I'm going to take this as 2005 because this message of the 2520 is now going to be presented by Jeff. But the arising, I would put here as 2007, because that's really when the message is, is arising in the movement. Right? So, so we're taking that this is going to be about the 2520, at least in part, right? This first part is this preparation to the message of Samson. And it's going to be connected to the message of July 18. So we can sort of establish that. And I don't know why the zero disappeared. That must be just this. Okay. And this is going to be uh, the woman arising was, or, or Manoa arising, pardon me, and went after his wife. So that's going to be verse 11. I mean, whether this is the best way to do it or not, I don't know. Right? Because this is, again, we're just trying to work this out. And whether we, we would bring these all into these details, we might bring them all together in, in some way. But I, I really want people to think about this uh, because we're going to have to get this line done tomorrow. And read this over prayerfully and, and try to see if any of what we're doing makes sense. Because we're going to have this angel of the Lord, right, um, end up revealing their name, that it's secret, and we would have to try to mark when that is. When would we mark this, this Palmoni revealing its name? We're also going to have this offering. And what's that? Jeff, uh, I remember he was doing a presentation and he was saying that Palmoni came on the scene when 
Pat Rombie pointed out the 46 years from 1798 to 1844 connected with John chapter 2 with the 46 years of the temple. Okay, so that's when Jeff says Palmoni becomes, reveals his name, so to speak. Yes, I can't remember the year, but it was probably around 2006. Okay. Okay, so we start to see that uh, that these spans of years become symbols. And, and so definitely, what when I look at this story, this is the preparatory message to understand July 18th. That is, there is a foundation that's laid in this period of time for the birth of Samson to occur. Right. I mean, at least we can say that. However, we're going to mark these on a line, however, we're going to date them. We have this deliverer, this judge. And it's going to be Samson. And there's this preparatory work and we can see in what what's happening here. We can see the symbols related to Palmoni to the twenty five twenty. So at least, whether my line's a great line or not, we should be able to see that, right? Do people agree that that makes sense, what we've been doing so far, at least in principle? Okay. I'll, I'll take your silence as an affirmative because there's no objections. But I, I find this tough. You know, we need, we need, I mean, I'm getting feedback a bit, but we've gone through this and, and maybe what we could do, you know, if you have time is look over some of the presentations that we did regarding Samson on these chapters and try to bring back to your remem your memory how we understood these these verses. So I may be trying to, because I think that this chapter 13 is about 9-11, the whole, the whole chapter, but it's, it's a line that's an expansion of 9-11. That is, it's a reform line, which 9-11 is a part. Um, and so Judges 13 is going to give us all of this this period maybe from 9-11 to a certain point that's preparatory to the birth of Samson when that comes into the movement. So that's how I would look at this. And then we need to understand this offering, what this means. And with the angel of the Lord ascending in flame up of the altar, ascending in the flame of the altar. And Manoah and his wife look on it and fall on their faces to the ground, right? So there's a bunch of things here, a bunch of symbols that we need to address. And we need to sort of figure out how we can place these on the line. Okay, so uh, let's close in prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, we are grateful for the time we've had here this morning. We ask that you can continue to guide and lead us. Ask, Lord, that you can work upon our hearts, uh, that we can understand your word. And um, we need your help in all these things. Be with each person throughout this day. May your angels watch over us. May your Holy Spirit speak to us. And we ask this in Jesus' name.